In this video, we're going to be going over different kinds of output types for your AI agents. AI agents can output their responses in a number of different ways, and we're going to be going over each of them in detail here. So let's go ahead and get started. You can see here that I have my AI agent, and on the left-hand side, I've created several different workflows for different kinds of outputs that uh, your AI agent can create. We're going to go from the most basic and down to the most complex. The first output is a plain text output, and this is the default output for any AI model. This is just what happens when the AI model outputs its response. It's unformatted text. So here I have a generate text block. It's going to write a social media post, but it's not going to format that post in any way. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So it's going to quickly generate this post. You can see that while it does have some emojis, the text itself is completely unformatted. There's nothing special to it. We can copy and paste it, but that's about all we can do with it. So this is really good if you're creating some sort of chat output or you just want some uh, simple text uh, at the end of your workflows. The next type of output is the markdown output. And this is using that markdown syntax that we covered in our prompt writing video. So you can see these symbols on the right hand side indicate different ways in which we can format the text. Uh, so in this case, it's going to write a blog post about race cars and we've provided an example output using markdown here at the bottom. So let me go ahead and make this my entry workflow. We can go ahead and preview the draft agent. And in this case, you can see that it is generating formatted text. And what I mean by formatted text is we have some headers, we have some list items for each paragraph, and uh, each type of header you know, is, is styled. It has uh, some larger text size and some bolding. So this is more formatted, uh, and let's move on. The next kind of output is the JSON output, and this is one of two structured outputs that you can uh, create with your AI agents. In this particular example, I'm having it scrape a URL, uh, in particular this uh, article from The Verge, and the article from The Verge uh, is going to give us all kinds of information. We're going to use AI to analyze that article and extract all the entities mentioned and how they relate uh, to the content from that page. And you can see here at the bottom that we have uh, this output schema set to JSON. We've also provided it with some structure that we'd like to see from this output. And then we're simply going to uh, display the output here in this display content block. So if we set this as our entry workflow and we open up the draft agent one more time, it's going to scrape that web page and uh, extract all the entities in a very structured way. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to uh, where the output is. All right, so it has just finished generating its output, and you can see that this is a standard JSON. It's created this array of different entities that were mentioned in the article, and this is very structured. Each entity has a name, description, and relation. So we can do a lot of things with this. We can iterate through this list and investigate further. We can display these values individually in some sort of way later in our workflow if we'd like to, uh, but the structure allow gives us a lot of flexibility uh, when it comes to uh, doing things later in our workflow. The other thing to note is that you can also output JSON at the end in the terminator block. And this is done with this return data. What this is good for is if you are utilizing Mind Studio either via API or via some uh, different orchestration platform where you're triggering an AI agent to run in the background, you're going to want to utilize this JSON output to return values back to that larger orchestration or application. You can see here that I am outputting uh, this JSON that was generated because we might want to use that in our application in some way. Okay, moving on to the next kind of structured output is this CSV uh, output. And we're doing the same thing in this workflow. 
You can see we're scraping that web page again, but in this case, our output schema is a CSV. And we're using a CSV notation in the sample output here. Now, in the display content block, it's important to note that your display type uh, can utilize CSV in different ways. You can just output the CSV as is, but we also have the option to output as an Excel spreadsheet if you'd like to do that. I'm gonna keep this at CSV, and let's go ahead and preview the draft agent here, and it's gonna do the same thing. So let me go ahead and skip ahead so that we can see the CSV output at the end. Okay, so the CSV output has completed, and you can see here that this CSV notation uh, has created a table for us with a name, a description, and a relation where for the article that we had just read. And you can use this in a number of different ways. You can export this, you can pull individual values in another orchestration workflow, or you can simply export it and use it for your uh, own uh, tables in Excel or Google Sheets. You can copy and paste it. A lot of different uses for this CSV output. Moving on to the next type of output is the image output. Now we did have a video covering media generation, uh, but I want to take a look at a couple of different ways in which we can uh, display this image output. So I'm going to go ahead and set this as the entry workflow. You can see we're generating of an image of a panda flying on a rocket ship, and I have two display content blocks, and that's because I, uh, in one block, am using the um, markdown way to display this content. Uh, we're using this markdown in order to display the image. But in the first display content block, we're actually using the display type image. And what that's going to do is our output is going to be one single full width image. So let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between the two. It is important to note that in this display uh, content block, you can also continue typing more here. So more uh, text here. So let's go ahead and preview this draft agent. And it's going to generate an image, it might take a second. So let me go ahead and skip ahead to uh, the actual output. Okay, so we have finally output the image here. And you can see here that we have this uh, canvas here with the transparent background and it is only displaying the image here in uh, the center of our AI agent. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what the image looks like when we display the image via Markdown. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. And you can see here that this image sits in line with the text. So there are some subtle key differences between these two uh, output types. And that is important to note in case you are wanting to display an image in a certain way. The next type of output is also very similar. It is the video output. So it works in the exact same way, only in this case, we are using our display type of video instead of image. And we also have some special syntax, which we talk about in the uh, media generation uh, video. So let's go ahead and take a look at this output type by opening up the draft agent. And again, it takes a couple minutes to generate a video, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead. Okay, so the video has finished generating, and you can see here that the video is being displayed inside of a player, uh, front and center, and when we play the video, you can see that there's this very silly panda uh, riding a rocket ship, um, and if, again, similar to the uh, image, this is uh, full uh, width, it's just uh, in the center here, and if we continue, we can display that video in line. So if it's a square video, it won't have the actual um, letter boxes uh, on the left and right or on the top and bottom. So here's the video in line. You can include text underneath this or above it, but generally it looks uh, the same here. And here is the, uh, the other video uh, being displayed here. So let's go ahead and move on to the final type of output. And this is probably the most complex output. We're gonna have a whole video about this, um, but it's the HTML output. 
And this HTML output allows you to display entire web pages. And in fact, you can di even display um, single page applications using uh, this uh, output type. So in this case, what we're doing is we're going to provide a YouTube video URL, and then we're going to fetch the captions of that YouTube video, and then it's going to process with AI. It's going to create some JSON, so we need that structure, and then it's going to generate an HTML output displaying a web page, um, summarizing and giving us uh, time codes for uh, each of these uh important sections of the video. So let me go ahead and run this. We'll open up the draft agent. Oops, I forgot to set this as the entry workflow. So let's go ahead and uh, reload the draft. And we will pull up a YouTube video. Why don't I go ahead and I will just type in uh, one of my favorite creators, MKBHD. And we will open up his first video here. There we go. Now I can just uh, pull the URL of this video and we will paste the URL in here and then it will begin pulling the transcript. So it's got the captions. It's now generating uh, the HTML asset. And you can see here that this is a full web page. This is a single page web page. Uh, we have completely customized the look and feel from the page. We've pulled the image uh, from the thumbnail of the video. And you can see here that it uh, generates a streaming response. So um, it's a very, very useful output, especially for creating uh, all kinds of different um, websites and uh, applications using AI. All of it can be generated using AI. And so that's very important. And we're going to have a whole video covering that. So those are the main types of outputs that you can create using your AI agents. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked it, drop us a like. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates to Mind Studio. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.